Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're looking at uh, the history of revival and we're into the Moravian revival. This revival began in 1727. Precious to this, the settlers at Hernot could not live together in peace. Finally, Count Zizendorf gave all his time to work for settlement of their differences. On the 12th of May, 1727, they all with great joy gave themselves afresh to God and promised to bury their dispute forever. The following account of the revival is taken from the history of the Moravians by Boast. From that time, there were wonderful effusions of the Spirit on this happy church until August 13th, when the measure of divine grace seems absolutely overflowing. Every day brought some new blessing. The Count applied himself to the visiting of the brethren and this was the beginning of those little associations which were afterwards called bands. These consisted of two or three persons who met together privately to converse on the spiritual state, to exhort and reprove and pray for each other. The 22nd of July some brethren agreed to repair, to repair at some time to a hill near Hernet in order to pour out their souls to God in prayer. And singing on the same day the Count set out to Cilicia, before his departure, several of the brethren engaged to devote themselves to the advancement of the revival. At this time, they had great blessing through reading the first epistle of St. John. On the Lord's Day, the 10th of August, the minister Roth was seized in the midst of the assembly with an unusual impulse. He threw himself upon his knees before God. The whole assembly prostrated themselves with him under the same emotion. An uninterrupted course of singing and prayer Weeping and supplication continued till midnight. All hearts were united in love. The brethren held a communion service on Friday 13th. It was full of deep spiritual power and emotion. The whole assembly united in prayer to God and then sung, My soul before thee prostrate light amidst tears and sobs, so that it could hardly be distinguished whether they were weeping or singing. The scene was so moving that the pastor could hardly tell what he saw or heard or heard. A few days after the 13th of August, a remarkable revival took place among the children of Hernut and Bethelsdorf. On the 18th of August, all the children of the boarding school were seized with an extraordinary impulse of the Spirit and passed the whole night in prayer. From this time, a constant work of God was going on in the minds of the children in both places. No words can express the powerful operation in the Holy Spirit upon these children. The 25th of August, the brethren began the ministry of continual prayer, which continued for a hundred years. They considered that as an ancient temple, the fire and the altar never ceased to burn. So in the church, which is now the temple of God, the prayers of the saints ought always to extend to the Lord. In January 1728, the brethren held their first missionary meeting. This meeting was celebrated by meditations on different portions of Holy Scripture and fervent prayers in the midst of which the church experienced a remarkable enjoyment of the presence of the Spirit. The Moravian mission began in 1731. Work was commenced in the West Indies and Greenland. In the years that followed, missionaries were sent to Labor, North America, South America, South Africa, Asia, Australia and many islands of the sea. The Moravian missions have been a mighty force in the evangelizing of the heathen, but we re must remember that it all began in the revival of 1727. Ed Jonathan Edwards Revival Edwards reveals the secret of the revival. He said, The spirit of those that have been in distress for the souls of others, so far as I can discern, seems not to be different from that of the apostles who travailed for the souls. On the evening of the day preceding the outbreak of the revival, some Christians met and spent the whole night in prayer. There was scarcely a person in the town, Northampton, old or young, left unconcerned about the great things of the eternal world. The work of conversion was carried on in a most astonishing manner and increased more and more souls did as were come by flocks to Jesus Christ. The works of God soon made a glorious alteration in the town so that in the spring and summer following the town seemed to be full of the presence of God it was never so full of love nor joy, yet so full of distress as it was then. There were remarkable tokens of God's presence in almost every house. It was a time of joy in families on account of salvation being brought unto them. 
Parents rejoicing over their children as newborn and husbands over their wives and wives over their husbands. The goings of God were seen in sanctuary and God's day was a delight and his tabernacles were amiable. The Great Awakening This revival in America began in 1735 and Jonathan Edward's revival was the beginning of this awakening which continued for about 25 years and was powerful in many American states. For Northampton the revival spread to South Hadley, Suffield, Sunderland, Green River, West Spring, Long Meadow, Enfield, Northfield. From these towns as centre it spread throughout New England and the Middle States. The leaders in the revival were Edwards, the Tenants, Davenport and Whitfield. The preaching of Whitfield stirred the whole country but it should be remembered that he was preaching to people whose hearts were prepared and who were longing for the gospel message. Of this period William Conant writes, The preaching of the gospel was attended with most wonderful power. In every part of New England the revivals gave new life and multiple numbers to the churches. In a large number of towns than our space enables us to enumerate throughout New England and the Middle States. It cannot be doubted that at least 50,000 souls were added to the churches of New England out of the population of 250,000. A fact sufficient to revolution as indeed it did the religious and moral character and to determine the destinies of the country. Not less than 150 new congregational churches were established in 20 years. The increase of Baptist churches in the last half of the century was still more wonderful, rising from nine to upwards to 400 in number, with a total of 30,000 members. There was a similar growth in the Presbyterian and other, and other churches. The new converts were fervent in spirit. They thirsted for the salvation of souls. An example, efforts were immediately employed for the spread of the gospel. Some went from house to house in their respective neighborhoods, warning every man and teaching every man in exhorting to turn to the Lord, pious ministers were stirred to unusual exertion, and all Christians were new their youth. The Lord gave the, the word, and great was the company of them that published it. They had deep conviction of the evil of sin and of peril of the rebellious state. The love of God in Christ overpowered their souls. Their views of the solemn realities of another world were vivid and heartwarming. Their earnest appeals made the stout-hearted tremble. Awed many a reprobate into silence and wrung tears from dar uh, daring and hardened offenders. Tens of thousands bowed before the majesty of truth. Some of the most powerful preachers uh, emigrated to other states and wherever they went, the floods of blessing poured over the land. Amen. So we're going to keep, keep going with a, another video.